All right, uh, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we're going to have Kellyanne Conway with us in just a moment. The very latest is uh, it was just about uh, 6 30, or rather 5 30 this morning, that President Trump in Air Force One landed out at Joint Base Andrews. And uh, after he came down the stairs, he got into an armored suburban for the 20 minute ride to the White House, mm -hmm. and he started doing some tweeting. Yeah, he didn't have his tie on. Hopefully, he got some sleep because he hadn't had sleep in 25 hours. But he is back home. The summit has come and gone, which is hard to believe. But he, when he went over, he talked to Kim Jong un and he showed him a video. There was an edited video of what North Korea could look like. If uh, if you really did denuclearize your country, that's right. And we have a little bit of um, of that video, I believe. Yeah, here's here we are. just landed a long trip, but everyone got uh, can now feel much safer uh, than the day I took office. There is no longer a nuclear threat for North Korea. What you're just watching is some of the video of that the president handed out in Korean as well as English. Uh, during this four-hour meeting, right. when they were with the four-by-four four meeting, they said, hey, Kim Jong-un and your delegation, look at what North Korea could become. And they did it by sure. Destiny Productions, and it wanted to, vi you want to visualize your impoverished nation, the Hermit Kingdom, right. doesn't have to do that anymore. So essentially just saying, come on basketball. over to our side. Whose idea was that? Let's go out to uh, Kellyanne Conway. She joins us right now from Washington, D.C. Kellyanne, that, uh, that video, I, I, you know, we, it's now available. Some people love it. Some people think it's kind of crazy propaganda. Whose idea was it? It came from our National Security Council, and you characterized it quite well there, that you know, Kim Jong-un has a decision to make. He can either continue to be nuclear capable, or he can swiftly move towards complete, verifiable, irreversible denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula, and really stop the economic self-isolation that has marked his country for so long, the suffering of the people. Uh, this is somebody, a 34-year-old man who has imbibed Western culture, you know, people report that he is uh, very aware of all the privileges that attend to Western civilization, and and I'm sure that some people even in North Korea know that as well. But look, this president, his moxie on the world stage cannot be overstated. And unlike the one-sided Iran deals, Cuba deals, where we gave up everything and got nothing in return, quite embarrassingly, this president has made clear that he is the one looking for Kim Jong-un to denuclearize and to stabilize. And this president also engaged allies in the region, Mr. Abe, Mr. Moon. He also has forged a great relationship with Mr. Xi on a number of big issues. And so he's been bringing along the leaders in that region the entire time. Mr. Abe was here last week, for example. But I think you cannot underestimate what it means to have a leader who makes good on the commitment to keep everybody more safe. Don't give too much attention to the angry people. Don't give too much credit to the critics, mm -hmm. frankly. I, almost who cares? They're skeptical. Uh, right. They're cynical. Last year, I sat two, two seats away from the president in Bedminster when he said fire and fury, and everybody exploded. Uh, he's going to bring us into now. Now he's de-escalating and denuclearizing the Korean Peninsula, and they're still not happy. But the country sees it. The country sees the president's social media platform. They saw his leadership unfiltered, Killian, authentically what did on Mr. the world stage. What did Mr. Kim say when he looked at that video? Because I know later the president took him out and showed him his ride. Hey, look at my Cadillac my here. Well, I've spoken to the president this morning, but I haven't spoken to Chairman Kim. Uh, so, but, but oh, what did he say? Yes, he, yes. But, but again, this president reads people like no one I've ever seen. And he's a master deal maker and negotiator. That's all very important because so many people are trying to fit into an old stale framework what just happened. Folks, you've got to throw out the playbook. For three years now, it's almost three years to the day that President Trump announced his candidacy for president, he has been just really turning the tables over and trying things in a different way. He was sent here to Washington to do exactly that, and now he's taken that all across the world. Uh, and, and those, look, I think the a denuclearized Korean Peninsula, no doubt, is a benefit to everyone. This is a global issue. This is not an American issue. It certainly isn't just about North Korea and South Korea. This benefits everyone. Look what's happening with Iran. This president hates those deals. He said, we gave up so much and got so little, we, we shoveled over pallets of cash. So when this president's on the world stage for everybody to see unfiltered, when he holds forth with the media for an hour and five minutes, he gives at least four different right. interviews. Um, he, the, the bilateral is covered by thousands of credentialed press. 
This is the president that I think we should all see more of. The more right. we see of President Trump, the more we hear from him, the better. You brought up something interesting. The president said this twice now. Iran is a different country <laughs> since we tore up the deal. Do you know what he means by that? I think it just means that he has gone in and done, uh, undone what the last president did. And the last president didn't have the courage to bring that Iran deal to the Senate. No, but he says they're acting differently. Like Kellyanne, he well, says they're acting differently. I didn't know. Are they acting differently? Well, I, I'm not going to go into what the president discusses with his diplomatic and national security team when it comes to Iran and other countries. But with the president, they, they did act differently. They responded almost they responded immediately. I think there were death to America chants from some folks over there uh, when the president took action. He made good on that promise as well. Why? Because this country, whether it comes to trade, whether it comes to tariffs, whether it comes to Iran, Cuba, now North Korea, stop with the one-sided deals that um, always screw America, American workers, American interests. This president, it, it, it really, he's shown leadership and skill, but he's also shown will in a way on the world stage and here domestically that has our economy booming beyond what anybody even expected and anticipated. You cannot overstate the effect of the Trump economy on the workers in this country. 6.7 okay. million American jobs that are available exceeding the number of people we're even looking for. But it's his moxie. And also, this is a process. I, I really hope people saw President Trump in full in Singapore when he very humbly said, you know, it's a process. And I may come back in a year, mm -hmm. this didn't work out, and I may say, hey, it didn't work out, but at least we tried. As Secretary Pompeo has said, this is a mission of peace. Peace and prosperity should be everybody's goal. Everybody should get on mm -hmm. Team America for that. All right, Kellyanne, this headline will get your attention and make you click on it if you're on online. This is from The Daily Wire. Watch. CNN's Jim Acosta interrupts historic signing ceremony, shouts at Trump. That was their headline. If you click on it, this is the video you see. Mr. President, did he agree to denuclearize, sir? We're starting that process very quickly. Very, very quickly. Absolutely. Did you talk about auto warm beer, sir? Hmm. So there are some critics, Kelly, Kellyanne, saying that he was choosing the wrong moment, a historic moment, to throw out questions to the president. And then uh, the 2020 campaign manager for President Trump, Brad Pascal, uh, Parscale, who's been on our show before, he's now calling for Acosta to lose his press credentials. He thought it was inappropriate. What are your thoughts and what are the president's thoughts? Well, some people in the White House press corps do that routinely. Uh, they want to make things about them. I'm not naming any names because why give it oxygen? But they certainly want to make it about me, myself, and I on Twitter. They're all a hot mess in the kind of snark and bark towards this uh, president and those who work for him, um, including here at the White House, in the cabinet, and elsewhere, uh, things that would not pass editorial muster in a newspaper. I call it social media muscle, cable news cojones. Many of them demonstrate <laughs> that but don't have the courage. Uh, but this, this summit is about peace and prosperity. It's not mm -hmm. about that correspondent or another correspondent. And the president didn't even make it about himself. He made it about a process. He made it right. about doing something great for the world. Look, the last president was handed the Nobel Peace Prize. This president is actually going to earn it. Right. And that's all we need to know from this. It's his moxie. And, and look, I, I do think that the I've said from the beginning, as a pro-press person here, I've said from the beginning that the press and the presidency have joint custody over the country for the next eight years, the next six and a half years. And, and beyond. Uh, and people need to really figure out how to cover this president in a respectful manner. They can be skeptical, right. well, like they can you be probing, but Kellyanne, there's a time and a place. Be like, a polite house guest. Like you said earlier, you got to throw out the playbook with this president. You were just talking about this last summit, but the summit before, earlier in the week, when the president left Canada, you know, the, the world community was like, we can't believe this Donald Trump guy. He's walking away from the Western civilized economies. What's up with that? It's not surprising. This is exactly what Donald Trump said right. when he was running for president. That's right. You can draw a straight line from how candidate Trump campaigned and what he promised the American people to getting elected on those promises and elevating issues like unfair trade deals and wanting to renegotiate them and make them more fair and reciprocal. This is not a president who has ripped up trade deals and walked away. Harumphing. This is a this is a president who has said, let's renegotiate ones that are more fair and more reciprocal to whom? to American workers. He's the president of this country. He's protecting his workers, American industries. The president has said, if we don't have steel, we don't have a country. And look at the results. 
look at how people are bending to the will of President Trump, whether they want to admit it or not. Right. And by the way, a lot of consensus building was done at the G7. They agreed to things that aren't getting as much coverage because we always go to the heat and not the light. But this president has said from the beginning, and look at the result, the deregulation, the taxes, and the ability and the willingness to renegotiate bad trade right. deals, multilateral trade deals, taking us out of TPP days into office, wanting to renegotiate Chorus and NAFTA and the rest. What has happened? All of that put together, we have an increase in the number of new construction jobs, over 300,000, over 300,000 new manufacturing jobs. I, I manufacturing well, is back, timber, mining, right. all of that. Those industries were, were left for dead, many of them. They were like this, flatlining. And, and he will continue to do that. He's going to lead, but he's not going to capitulate. Right, Just Kelly because Ann, people think it's you. the fancy thing to do. But being that it's to our advantage to have to be friendlier uh, and fairer with our allies, well, has the president expressed to you any willingness to speak again to Justin Trudeau or anybody else from the G7 summit to smooth things over or start restart talks about rebalancing trade? The president speaks to many uh, people, including world leaders, routinely, as you know, and, and frequently. So I'm sure that he will he will continue those conversations, as will his, his trade team and his economic advisors and the rest. Let me just make clear, though, anybody thinking he's going to change his mind from the campaign promises and his leadership as president has not been paying attention, folks, right. for three years now. What are they waiting to change? Again, they just expect that he's going to bend to the existing framework. He is here in Washington to change all of that. And, and anybody who thinks it's just a matter of time until he exceeds, and yep. this is a war of attrition, the, the war of attrition will be won by him because it's working. There he's renegotiating go. trade deals. He's putting tariffs right. up. He's got carving out exceptions for countries and industries, certainly. But he is making good on those promises. The sheer velocity and volume of the way this president works. Well, he has is, had is a very busy week. And Kellyanne, we, we thank you very June. much for joining us. Half of June. And look at it. It's incredible. Thank right. you so much. Thanks, Kellyanne.